Hey, Coach, today we are going to be talking kind of about junk defenses a little bit. I'm going to show you one play that you could use against a box and one. So as we get closer to tournament time, teams start to try to figure out where their advantage is. And they know if they can't uh, stop maybe one player from scoring, they need to try to do something different defensively. So a box and one, a triangle and two kind of come into play. So if you see a box and one, I want to give you a kind of a play that you can use, maybe even a concept uh, that you can use as well uh, to, to combat that. So we're inside the coaching lab. We're going to go inside the library. Under special situations is where you'll find the ebook. You also can go just on the website and you can go to products down to our digital coaching products and you'll find so that's a products tab, digital coaching products. You'll find the ebook that we're going to pull this one play out of. So if you don't want to, um, if you're not a member of the coaching lab and you just want to purchase this one product, it is there for you to purchase. Uh, so we'll go down here to special situations. And for those of you who are coaching lab members, there are some other ones outside of just what's in the ebook. There's some other plays uh, from other coaches as well that you can look at if you want to. But we're going to attack the 13 or look at the 13 plays to attack junk defenses. And again, just going to show you one option here and then talk about a concept that you could use as well uh, to help your team out. I know we've had some players that they have tried to run teams have tried to run a box and one against us um, and it's always good just to go over and practice i would say start looking at it now because you got a couple of weeks before tournaments maybe and then it's not going to be like you had one or two practices and the players never you know really got a grasp of it you need to run this stuff a couple of times so that they can see it. it's just like situational stuff um so so that they're ready to go all right so we went past one here here we go now i've broken it up into seven different like sections it's not that difficult to to teach but i wanted to make sure that i explained it in a way so i didn't lose anybody on a pdf it can be kind of hard to with all the lines and, and things go in places so player two is going to be the one that is going to have the box and one against them so we're in a traditional box format sometimes you'll see teams in a, in a diamond format uh, it's still kind of a box and one principles and it'll rotate it'll kind of morph from a box to a diamond a little bit but having a player face guarded or closely guarded is certainly going to give it away uh, so what we have in this first one here is we got player two lining up with three three players right in a row five three and two what we're going to do is we're going to set a screen with the player getting the box in one as well as our post player. So X5 and X2 are going to get screened. Three is going to pop out. Now three needs to be a three point shooter for this to work. Um, but these two players can't get out here because they're being screened. If one of them does leave, so let's say that X5 is the one who goes out there, X2 could just exit. Now that's what we're going to see here in just a second. Is X3 is here. And X5 leaves. That gives us two options. One is if five is a great post player, we're going to just dump it down into them because they're really going to be unguarded. Uh, player two is going out to the opposite side to pull that defender out of there. So we've got a chance for a post up. If five is not your main post player and you want a little more action, have them go screen away and have your four come across. If that's a little bit better option as a post, then you're still going to have your five out here. You're going to have your four getting screened, and then we're going to get a dump down, hopefully, for a, for a basket. Now, I've got them going kind of to the short corner here. That arrow probably should be up a little bit higher because we want them to score right away. If that doesn't work for us, we're going to go ahead and continue here. And we can see how players have all rotated down. We're in a little bit more of a diamond shape than we are in a box shape at this point. So three is going to um, reverse the ball up to one. Okay. Now, if four happens to be a decent shooter for us, we can go ahead and we can screen X4. And we can get the four running through, or a variation of this would be have four screen X5 and send your three all the way through. So if one of those is a better three-point shooter, then you could run the screens for them a little bit. All right. The other thing that we're doing here now is we're using player two to set a screen up top. This is going to force player one to have to come up and guard this. Remember, X2 will not leave player two in a box and one. Their job is to stay there. So anytime we use them to screen, we're drawing two defensive players together, and that's going to leave somebody else open uh, because they've close guarded one player. Now we're drawing a second defender there. So we've got four other players on the floor that we've got to be ready to utilize. So dribble that ball over pull X1 up. Whoever your best shooter is, we've screened for, so we can try to get a three-point shot right here. Um, 
the last one here, if we didn't have a three point shot, we've got a short corner, we've got a post up. So we were going to screen, then we're going to turn, we're going to post, possibly get it in there to our post player as well. And if you had to take it one step further, now this is kind of getting, you know, where how, how much can your players handle? We've got some great scoring opportunities leading up to this point, um, but screening across, always screening across and then looking to the inside, it's going to help in a box and one. So if we pull any either of the defenders out and then we can screen across, we're going to get an opportunity for a post up. It's going to be really hard for them. There's no help side. So if they try to front it, you can throw it over the top. If they play behind, we can get it in there. So this is a way to utilize your two to set screens to get other people open. We saw a three-pointer for player three in the beginning. Um, we saw maybe either a three-pointer for player four or three as a, another option. And then we've seen ways that we can get it into the post for a couple of post touches. So those are all things that you can do against a box and one. Now, I want to talk a little bit about concepts. Um, and the biggest thing with concepts is screens. If you ever have a player who's getting a box and one, uh, you can set multiple screens for that player and make them try to switch, make them try to find mismatches. So if you know there's a particular player that you really want to guard your best player, um, we want to, let's say that X, that's five was being guarded by a bigger, slower player. We want five to be the screener. That way, X5 has to choose. Are they going to switch? Are they going to try to hedge out on a ball screen? Are they going to try to lay back? But if player three is a dynamic player, or excuse me, player two, sorry, they're the ones that are getting the, the box and one. If player two is a dynamic player, then X5 is going to have a, a hard time guarding them. So that's one thing that we want to do. The other is just like we've seen here, utilize the screens from that player being face guarded. Um, to get other people open. And what you'll find is that X2 will help off a little bit and it's gonna give uh, just a little window of time to get open, to post up, uh, to do some different things. But anytime you use player two in this example to be the screener, you're forcing that defense to have to make some tough choices. And if you've got somebody else who can step up or if you guys can get player two the ball with a little bit of space, you're gonna find open shots, open driving lanes, and then a they have to use their ability to finish and knock them down. So, Coach, the concepts there uh, hopefully will help you out. We use a lot of screens whenever we see a box in one. I find that defenders get tired of chasing screens, and eventually our best player gets open. But we also uh, focus a lot on conditioning. So I'm not worried about tiring our offensive player out. Um, it's more about tiring the defense out because I think that we're always the best conditioned team when we step on the floor. Um, if I didn't feel that way, we go look at what our next strength is. Is it our post ability? Is it our three-point shooting ability? How do we get those people open with screens? So hopefully this helps you out, Coach, if you see a box in one. Uh, whether you're seeing this over on YouTube, you're seeing this on the blog at CoachMattDennis.com, social media channel. Uh, I hope that it helps you out. I'd like to know what you do for a box in one. Maybe there's a concept that, that I don't know about that I certainly can learn and I can improve on my coaching ability. And a lot of times what I'm learning is from coaches who get in contact with me. So I'd love to hear from you. Uh, until next time though, coach, go in the gym, get your team better.